Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Hello out there, it's me again, your host of Hello Self Podcast, Patricia Leonard. As you remember, this is about turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans, and mine too. (laughs) Yes, my whole goal is to keep getting my dreams and goals off my someday shelf, and as I do that, Hope that I'm encouraging you through my own sharings as well as the sharings of my guests. Their stories, the life experiences they have. And if you remember, the last podcast I did myself was on the law of attraction. Something that had happened to me that I could not explain. (laughs) And so I took that curiosity that was going on within me and created a podcast. So what I'm going to be doing today is following up with phase two of that Hello Self podcast. And really at this time, the last time I basically focused on what happened to me. This time, I want to understand more. And the topic of today is the law, the why and what of the law of attraction. So I've done some research and uh, lived with my own self since that last um, experience with the law of attraction, specifically to a human being. And I've just lived with that a little while and asked myself a few things. But I recently did some more research, and I'm going to be referring to my notes a lot because these are the things that I found in my research, and I want to bring them up, and I want to make sure that I highlight some of these points. So recently, I said that I shared a podcast on the law of attraction with an emphasis on a personal experience, and that left me with a lot of questions of why and What is this about? What does it mean for me? What does it mean for an individual when you find yourself in attraction for something? Now, it doesn't always have to be a human being. It just happened to be that is what mine was about. But it could be that you want to go to another country or that you want to experience a certain career, or you've always wanted to start your own business, and you're just attracted to that. But mine happened to be, and that's what I'm going to focus on more, is the personal experience of a law of attraction to an individual or to other individuals. So this is from human to human kind of attraction. Now, what the science says, scientifically speaking, there is no evidence that says the law of attraction actually exists or is scientifically proved. But that's uh, interesting because what I experienced was something I can't even explain. I, I, I don't even know. It was just something I felt all over in my mental, emotional, physical, spiritual being. What we put out into the universe, scientific research says, we receive back because everything, even thoughts and feelings, carry a vibration, says Emily Haley, a spiritual wellness coach. She suggests observing the attraction with interest and asking yourself, why to feel like this? I ask myself a thousand times. <laughs> when you shine a light on the why and the what, sometimes it makes makes it easier to make sense of it. And so that's why I'm going on. I just want to make sense. And I want to, if anyone else has had these kind of experiences, I just want to share what I've found out. You can do your own research. But I thought I would just go ahead and share these thoughts 
and these ideas and this research, these research points that I have come up with. Where are some definitions about tr attraction and how it happens? So where do these come from and where what are the definitions? A licensed social worker, Emil Eschberger, in North Carolina had a client. And Emil inquired why she loved being near this certain man because she said she was attracted to this man. And he wanted to know why. Because I think that's what we're doing today is asking ourselves why. Her response was, he is wealthy and therefore very powerful. That makes me feel protected. So there usually is a reason is what science says for why we feel what we feel. And sometimes it's about asking ourselves why, do, why does this person make me feel this way? Or why do I feel these kind of feelings when I'm around this person or other people that I'm attracted to? Attraction refers to the involuntary feeling that one gets when they have an interest or feel directed towards someone or something, just as I've said earlier. How does attraction happen? The first thing to remember is that attraction, which we stated earlier, is involuntary in nature. Just like most feelings, attraction is something that can't be controlled. And I was totally out of control. And as I said in my last podcast, you know me, <laughs> I like to be in control. The response that has that one has to whatever it is, might be t deterred or the feeling might fade once logic or other interjections into the situation are considered. So that's why I ask myself, why? Why would I be attracted to this person? And one thing that I did notice after getting out of the situation and starting to settle down for a moment is that I liked the way he was kind and he was interested in what I was doing. And I said this in my other podcast and really wanted to help and add value. But that initial gut feeling that happens when someone experiences attraction is out of their hands. And it was truly out of my hands because only in my looking back did I say that might have been some of the reasons. Because of this, some people believe that, is tra that attraction is purely biological and comes strictly from different biological factors such as hormones, pheromones, or involuntary traits. Those are traits that are passed down through our generations or in a specific cycle of life. And these are independent of one's will, not one's own choice. In other words, I did not consciously choose that I was going to get these feelings all over. Uh, uh, that was the whole shocker is, what am I feeling? What is going on here? How do I maintain focus while we're doing this work? <laughs> oh, some people believe that attraction is formed through social constructs and narratives. And we'll go on and talk a little bit more about this. How does attraction happen? Another point. There is pers perspective that individuals formulate their own opinions of what they find attractive or desirable in people. And in looking back, that is one of the things that I really noticed is the commitment of this individual to help me do what I was trying to do. So I really like that. And then the kindness given, even in even if they felt impatient with me, they were very patient. People might have different opinions or views of what they find beautiful that directly clash with biological or, or social constructs of what 
should be beautiful. So that is an interesting concept right there. Yes, this is not what I had in my head as the way it would be or who it would be. So I think we create these storylines of what would attract us to someone and what wouldn't. And I've noticed in my own life that over time, what I've seen in a man goes more toward who that person is or another person. It doesn't always have to be a man. But what I find is the stories that I had built in my head about specifically what a male figure would look like and what I would like in other organizations or tribes that I hung around or associates or friends. So my, and I think this is with our maturity, I would guess has been with mine, is that I find that different factors or different behaviors or different, what I call beauty, <laughs> physical beauty, uh, has changed over time. Because I find that sometimes it's built up on um, things that really don't matter to me anymore or matter less. Let, let's say that way, matter less. So my priorities begin to change. The truth is, that another point, how does attraction happen? The truth is, no matter what concept or theory makes the most sense, attraction happens simply because it happens. Now, isn't that interesting? Here we are trying to figure it all out. <laughs> and all we're going to do is maybe raise an awareness in ourselves about, are we numb to life? Do we still notice the things that give our heart sing, make our heart sing? Or do we still notice things that we intellectually have a commonality with? Or do we still have some of the same interest? Is that something that is attractive to us? So I think we may get older and we may change some of those things. But the truth is, no matter what, attraction happens simply because it happens. Now, if we want to figure out why am I attracted to that person, then we can go on and look at that and say, was it their behavior? Was it part of what they believe in, their own beliefs? Is it because I'm very interested in where they're from in their life or that they're of a different culture and I want to know more about that culture? Yes, it's all of those things. Because it is unconscious and outside of our control, the best thing we can do is be gentle and easy with ourselves during times when we are confused about all of this. Experience is by not judging ourselves and just accepting the experience and let it be and see where it takes you the next step. So I think to become aware of it, that we're not dead, <laughs> and to maybe ask some why and what questions. What was this all about for me? And I have been doing that over the past couple of weeks, and I do have more clarity, and it has made more sense. The good thing is I found out that I'm not dead to the things that I'm attracted to and that they have changed over time, and I'm sure they will change again. <laughs> the next part I wanted to look at was in my research, the psychology of attraction. Why do we fancy certain people? Now, I have begin to talk a little bit about some of those things already. Questions that come up for me as I am part of the other person. Am I part of the other person's law of attraction? So I said, are they attracted to me? Is that what caused me to be attracted to them? 
Or is this feeling and or knowing a result of my own deepest desires? So I began to ask myself, am I uh, picking up on their or experiencing their own law of attraction process? I wasn't sure if it were was mine because it happened in such an ambiguous way, <laughs> just out of the clear blue. But anyway, I wanted to know, I thought to myself, are they attracted to me? And is that why I'm attracted to them? Now, that doesn't always work for everybody, but we can pick up on it and we begin to sense that person's attracted to me. Now, it doesn't always have to be the same feeling that we had. They may have been attracted to us for what we were doing, or they may have been attracted to us because of something we said to them or to someone else. Or they may have been attracted to us because of the lifestyle we live. So, that's That doesn't always mean simply that there's a connection in the vibration and process of attraction. It can happen from one person to another like that. And we may not be the people that instigated that initially. Attraction is incredibly an incredibly complicated thing. And science probably won't be able to determine all the reasons someone is you find someone attractive or vice versa, they find you attractive. An individual having a crush or a strong feeling of romantic love for someone may experience physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual moments of distraction 24 hours a day. So it may stay with you. And yes, that's exactly what happened to me. That's why I decided to pursue it more with my why and what. So it can get stronger over time because we still don't have an understanding of what it's about. Because it may have been the first time that specific experience touched us in all those various aspects of our being. Oh, yeah, we can see with our eyes sometimes that we're attracted to somebody physically. Wow, he's great. Or wow, what a female she is. Look at those legs. Or we have those. And if we say we don't, then we're lying to ourselves. Are they bad things? No. Shows that we're alive. They only become bad if we act on them in the wrong way. I don't know. It's important to become aware of your thoughts regardless. And don't always judge them. Just to be aware of them and look at them. And don't be hard on yourself. That's what I tend to do. I get hard on myself because, Patricia, you shouldn't be thinking like a, about a, like that at your age or as a woman or as a mother, a grandmother. You shouldn't be thinking. Thoughts are thoughts. And to deny that we have thoughts, feelings, emotions, spiritual moments, that's denying our own being, our own existence. No, I want to be alive. I want to be alive to who I am because that's what makes me who I am is learning more about myself. And one of the ways I learn is from other human beings. That's not all, but that's one way. So then I came to, in my research, 12 biological factors that make you attracted to someone, at least as noted in Business Insider. Now, this article was published in October 2018 and was then updated again in February 2023 to include more experts and new information. So we keep finding out more about this because we're evolving as a universe and we're evolving as individuals and scientific study. So 
to say I know it all now is a lie to self. And maybe an indication, stop living, you've experienced it all. No, I haven't. <laughs> I am what more to <laughs> oh, <laughs> and in this, it says it comes down to a mixture of biological, physiological, and experience-based factors. And that is exactly what I have experienced is biologically, I told you that all of these things were happening. Physiologically, yes, same thing. Biologically, I, I was thinking why am I at my age having these kind? This is for young people. No, no. We are all the same, just going through different ages and different phases and experience-based factors. I had to look at the experience too and the physiological and recognize the biological aspects. I'm alive. <laughs> I found that out. And all those physiological and biological aspects and experiences. Yeah. Here are some of the most common reasons people are biologically drawn to each other. We, I think it's, what did they say? 12. So I'm going to point out and highlight these 12 biological factors that makes you attracted to another individual or to someone else. It doesn't have to be the opposite sex. So the very first thing that they pointed out doesn't mean that these are in specific order, but that they pointed out. A study in 2018 found women with certain scents are more attractive to men. It turns out they were most appealing when they had high estrogen and low progesterone levels. The high estrogen is more the feminine aspects of them and more associated with the beauty, not necessarily the physical beauty, but just the, the pre what makes a woman, what makes a man. Um, this balance of hormone indicates high female fertility. For those who are really interested in family, maybe that would be something that would be really attractive. It's really weird things that will attract people to someone based on scent. So there's a lot of things. Sometimes it can be just who they are. I mean, you can be around somebody or smell their clothing and you know who it is, especially if you have partnered up or lived with that person. You can smell it on their pillow or their clothing or whatever. I know even in laundering my son's clothes when he was a little boy, I picked up a scent. It's just who we are as human beings. And I think animals are even much better at that than us. Okay, the second thing they pointed out was taste. That's interesting because the, another factor that they pointed out People transfer about 80 million bacteria when they kiss each other. And they keep doing it. But the fact is, beyond that, that kissing stimulates the release of oxytocin, token, tocin, oxytocin. It's O-X-Y-T-O-C-I-N. I looked it up and now I can't remember how they told me to pronounce it. Oxytoxin, I think it is. But that the taste of another person also, and that the taste of another person also helps with biological attraction. So beyond the fact that we're um, passing bacteria back and forth, the kissing itself, the physical touching of the lips is a biological attraction. They're soft and they somehow it says something to who they are and how they feel about us. Sometimes it's just a smack on the lip and that's it. Just a like that. 
<laughs> I don't know about you, but I want more than that. <laughs> Humans don't have strong olfactor skills. I hope I'm pronouncing. And kissing allows us to smell and taste a person at the same time. And we get different responses from that particular way. It's like the smell and the taste is happening at all one at once. And we tend to feel more attracted to someone with a different response. Have you, and I, I, I know you have experienced this, but I couldn't help but bring this out in my research. The taste and the smell do something to our emotional. Now, that wasn't the case in mine, but these are just factors that make us attracted to another person or cause us to respond in some way to certain factors within a person. This Sarah Johns, an expert in human reproduction and evolutionary psychology at the University of Kent, some people say it must be, it is much simpler than that, though, than going through all that study. She says, have you ever dated someone with bad breath? <laughs> you kiss them and you're like, ugh, that was terrible. I never want to do that again. We have our responses to these kisses. Sometimes it may be a positive response biologically. And other times it may not be a positive response. It's, that's enough of that. Okay, a third item was diet. Uh, what you eat could have an impact on how attractive you are. And I think that's very interesting. A study in 2017 found that women were more attracted to sweaty men that ate diets high in produce than men who ate refined our carbs like pasta and bread. Isn't that interesting? But I'm more attracted to the people, I, I would say my attraction around diet is more attraction to the food they eat that keeps their body healthy. So I, yes, that does attract me. Not necessarily in this particular way that she explains, but it's eating diet, having a diet that supports a healthy body. So that's just, that just happens to be me. And yes, it does play a factor in my life. Besides, I wouldn't want to go out to dinner with somebody that always wants to go to, I don't know, some carb place. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, I'm not going to pick on that, but I think a diet and the way we care for ourselves is an impact that I notice. Fertility, I'm needing to move along with these. Fertility, being fertile, doesn't just make you smell attractive, but it can affect how you look. One study from a few years ago found that men would rate women's faces and voices as more attractive when they were in the most fertile phases of their life. Isn't that interesting? And maybe that's because who we are from a gender standpoint, maybe at certain points in our life, sexual aspects of who we are, or biological, I should say, aspects of who we are, are more prevalent, to not only us, but to other people. However, a study in a speed dating setting in 2021 found that women closer to ovulating were actually no more attractive to men. When one scientific study says this, then the second scientific study comes up with some other data. I'm just exposing, uh, it was to me, this research is exposing me to things, for me to think about things for myself, not just taking something that says, oh, that's it. No, I want to know for me, because that's who I am is learning about me. And that's why I'm sharing these with you, because I want you to be more aware of who you are and how you behave and how that impacts your life, the quality of your life and your attitude and your beliefs and the way 
you enjoy the world, the life you've been given. More hormones. Okay, number six was more hormones. And that oxytoxin is called the love drug, the one that I mentioned earlier that I missed. <laughs> it is associated with true sexual arousal and relationship building. So we produce that. It's a hormone that we produce, and love is connected to several hormones that make us feel warm and cozy. It just happens to be one. Dopamine is another one. And I don't know, a lot of times when I go work out, I feel high afterwards. I feel I have more feelings, more sense of who I am. It's a, it may be the serotonin, serotonin level. It may be us getting out of our flip-flop living <laughs> and stepping into a higher self, higher level of our own understanding of our body and our biological behaviors, our biological actions. Okay, number seven, kindness. And that's the one thing that I mentioned that I had. I don't know if that was all of it, but that's one thing that I really noticed with this individual's kindness and caring. If someone is kind, it can make them seem more attractive. And that's exactly what I experienced. A study showed that putting positive character traits against someone's photo meant people rated them as better looking. Isn't that interesting? Because it's like we're just not looking at one aspect. We're looking, I wasn't just looking at this person's physical body or the way they dressed. That wasn't the attraction were these other things. And I didn't know at the time but I also loved his smile. It was kind. Altruistic behaviors are attractive. And that's exactly what I experienced. Voice. Number eight is voice. One study found that women prefer men with low voices, especially just before they start ovulating. Now, I don't know what that has. Maybe it's some power that comes out of the low voice. That could be something inherently biological as deeper voices have been linked to producing healthier children. I don't know if, if I believe all of that. According to another study, people who reported being more sexually experienced and sexually active were rated to have more attractive voices by strangers. So the only thing that I could pull out of that is I think sometimes our voice does indicate our own personal belief and power in ourselves. How we see ourselves, our voice changes. On the days that you're down in the dumps and you don't feel so good or you feel like you're a victim of society or You've gone through relationships before and it's been like this. And yeah, I don't want that defeatist attitude. And that's not what people are looking for in voices. And I think that one of the things that we could look at in, in another person's voice is not being boastful, but simply speaking up, having an opinion. The worst thing you can do is ask somebody, hey, what do you think about this? Do you think? <laughs> Have you got an idea? <laughs> so I just like opinions. I like to learn. And I may not always agree with them. <laughs> okay, number nine, being some similar. And I do think that specifically in uh, a lot of my relationships, there are similarities. Now, I didn't know this person but we did have a common interest in the work we were doing. So that was something, some similarities that we had there. Research points us to being attracted to someone who are similar to us, both physically and in personality. And I think that is very true. I like somebody, I always try to be positive. I, I have my victim days or my, but 
I want to be positive about life because if I'm not positive, I may miss something that God has for me that day to witness. And because I'm down in the dumps, I totally miss it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, So I want to be positive and I want to be around people that are physically are uh, positive in the way they behave. And so being similar, it doesn't have to be in look, but having similarities in the way we see the world, but being open to others' ideas about seeing the world, because the only way we expand who we are is to get out of our stuck mindsets. And I'm telling you, yeah, I've had them too. And I still have them, and I keep (laughs) uncovering. Oh, my gosh. And I keep uncovering them. But, yes, um, mindset can limit our lives. Mindset can limit our Friends can limit our relationships. Mindset can limit our our opportunities in careers. Mindset. I was telling somebody the other day that, and I read cards, and I coach with cards, and I grew up with it. So my mom and my grandma and my uncle Junior, and so I never saw it as something bad. I saw it as God speaking to us, and that's exactly what happened. But when I was telling someone, they said tarot cards, now maybe other cards, but tarot cards are evil. I tell you, this is how I believe. And it doesn't mean you have to believe this way, but I want to be around people that are open to seeing other points of view. So being similar is one of those. I don't have to be around other card readers. But God speaks to me in many different ways. And he does to you, but you just don't pay attention half the time. You see a sign as you're driving down the road. And you say to yourself, you know what? I'd like to do that. Or I'd like to go there. Or you wo- it woke up something within you. Or you read a book. And... That's an interesting point of view. I never thought of it that way. All of the distance that we create by our traditional, but not only traditional, but just beliefs that we won't let go of. They limit our lives. They limit the relationships we have. They limit what we are capable of being and doing. So I want, it's not about cards. It's about the mindsets that we have. I just wrote, shared co-writing with a friend of mine out in Sioux Falls. And the whole book was about mind shift, shifting our mindsets into something that was more in alignment with openness, in alignment with acceptance. So anyway, being similar to me is very important too. Not exactly thinking the same way, but being similar in the fact that we will open to other thoughts. Okay. Being different. I like this one too, because (laughs) I love to be around people that are different than me. And it says here, sometimes opposites do attract. For instance, if you've lived in a shelter, lived a sheltered life, you might gravitate toward people who have extremely different experiences. Tell me about that. Why did you like that? So I do like differences. I want to know why they why they feel that way or why they see the world that way. And I want to know more being different. And if I only hang around those people that believe the way I believe and see the world, the way I see the world. And so I'm looking for a relationship that challenges my thinking and that they have some opinions of their own. 
and that they're willing to listen to mine and say, you know what? I hadn't thought of it that way. That's what makes the world greater is we all have our unique life experiences. And the more we share them, the more we come together in a common way instead of an adversarial way. When we stop simply because somebody doesn't see the world the way we see our world, how do we know what we missed in that relationship? Okay, and number 11, we're getting there. Maturity is another traction, is maturity. Just like the woman that said, I like this man that's got money and he's older and blah, and it makes me feel safe. As people mature, they tend to learn more about themselves, and I can vouch for that. <laughs> Some of it I like and some of it I don't. <laughs> this can work in your favor when looking for a partner because you are more likely to know what you want and what's important to you. And I can say over time that has uh, been a learning that I've had. The things that I thought at one point were really important and I had to go through a few marriages to because <laughs> I kept saying, that's important. Oh, yeah, that's important. If you're looking at people when they're younger and dating, you might be attracted to the entire external package and not so concerned with the internal. And the more I, the older I get, the more I'm attracted to who that person is not what they show me on the outside. Titles don't mean anything to me. They might impress you, but I'm not impressed by titles. Don't tell me I'm the CEO of a company. I don't know. Tell me more. Tell me that, you know something, in my life, this is one thing I've learned. I want to know who you are, not what you call yourself because you've never learned who you are. I've often asked myself, why do you... Just keep trying something else. I've written books. I've been a speaker. I've been a model. I've got a podcast. I've got a one-woman show. I've created a deck of professional cards for women. I created a calendar, a motivation. I never stop. You know why? I just want to know more of who I am and what I have to offer. Not for boastful reasons. It's just the way that I expand who I am. So I like to be around those kind of people. And I want to, and that's why I became a coach and a consultant to corporations, because I could help people see that they're more. And I want to be around people that see that they're more. I just was recently at a theater country music show, as a matter of fact, this weekend. And I met this man and woman. And they were not married, but they have been friends for years. And we were, she and I were talking. We were more alike. He was, he said, I'm really more introverted. And we were talking about he loves country music. And I said, I bet that there's something inside of you that, can, oh, no, I can't sing. You play an instrument? No, I can't do that. I said, I want to tell you something. I see you from the moment I met you and your friend here. I saw you as more than you think you are. I said, do you know how good looking you are? He was so embarrassed, so embarrassed. I couldn't get in because they wouldn't take a credit card. I couldn't get into the theater. And he pulled out $25 and said, here, come in and sit with us. I said, do you see who you are, the kindness, the gentleness, and I said, I bet you if I coached you for three weeks, you would be singing or performing on my high heels cabaret show. 
<laughs> oh, and his friend said, you're absolutely right. But that's what I want to do. I want people to see more of who they are. But because the problem is they don't know. They've undersold themselves most of their life. When you start maturing, I think people look more at the overall picture and not just the way somebody looks or the initial sexual attraction. And that is very true. Doesn't mean the sexual attraction goes away. I can vouch for that. However, it does mean that you finally get through all of your questions to yourself and you finally see what it really is about. What it really is about doesn't mean it's not about sexual attraction, but it could mean that it's not about sexual attraction and it's about more. And the first thing that we are familiar with in our life is, oh my gosh, that's a sexual attraction. No, it isn't always. It can be all of these things. It could be a hormonal thing. It can be a fertility thing, not for me anymore, but it could be facial traits. It could be the way they speak. On the other hand, familiar faces tend to be most attractive because people may be influenced more by their personal experiences in life than anything. And I think that's true. Facial traits are important, but it doesn't always have to mean what if you said one day, I only want a man with a lot of hair on his head. And yet, sometime in your life, you met this guy that was balding and you thought, oh, why am I attracted to him? Or he's not dressed in the Armani suit that you always said you wanted your partner to be dressed in. He didn't hold the kind of job that you thought you wanted your partner or the person you were attracted to hold. What if all of those things went out the door and the facial traits are gone too? Because as we mature or as we go to different cultures, we see different facial traits. Was it some facial trait that attracted you? So these are the whys and the whats. And why did it happen? And what was it really all about? Overall, okay, that was number 12, facial traits. Overall, it's unlikely to be just one thing. And I think that's what we're experiencing as we go through this. It's not just one thing that attracts us. And we're trying to figure that out as we feel and go through the various aspects of our uh, experience. Attraction is an incredibly complicated thing, and science probably won't be able to determine all the reasons you find someone attractive, or vice versa, they find you attractive. Often, what's more important is your compatibility and you're unlikely to be able to qualify, quantify that. And that is the truth. It's the compatibility. Sometimes you don't know. I don't know. I just, he just makes me feel protected. Or I just like his kindness. Or when he touches me, I just feel this sense of warmth. Or so you may not be able to quantify the whole thing. Maybe a lot of things. And then you may say, I really don't know. I've asked other people that, what made you attracted to him? It's interesting. Sometimes people find others more attractive as they get to know them better. And this can also happen in reverse. We can be more attracted to them or become less attracted over time because it's not always them. We like to say that. But maybe the things that we find attractive have shifted. 
And I can vouch for myself. I have shifted in the things that I find attractive now than I did only 10 years ago. We want to blame the other person. However, the what and the why is something we need to ask ourselves. What is the reason I am constantly putting my partner down or my friend down for these kind of things, which when that is really what attracted me to him or her. It's just like everything in life. It all begins with us. It all begins with us. And we like to act like it's the other person or it's the situation or it's them or it's. Mm -hmm. Go back and ask yourself what and why. Simon Sinek, even in your career, talks about know why you're doing a certain thing. Because when it doesn't feel right anymore, ask yourself, why did you think this was important at one point? And what was so important about it? So I think the questions of why and what can get us to a lot of things about who we are in life. And this is about our podcast, Hello Self, because it all begins with you. Blame others if you want. Become a victim if you want. Get in your flip-flop life and say, this is all I can have. You can play that game with yourself and cheat yourself of life. I want to stay alive. <laughs> Even if I don't know what the feeling is. <laughs> okay. I hope that this has helped some of you think about why you're attracted to someone and what the attraction is. And if you've been married for 50 years and you look at the partner that you're with, look at them and say, what is it about you? You don't have to say it out loud to them unless you want to have a discussion. But what is it about you that I was so attracted to and what is it that I'm so attracted to now? And I bet 10 bucks those priorities have changed. Doesn't mean you're less attracted. It just means that the reason you had the attraction initially, maybe you wanted a family. I've had some people that say, no, I want a family, while the other person wants a relationship. Doesn't mean they wouldn't consider that, but it just means that the priorities at that time are in the different. And then I think this law of attraction thing is bigger than just the moment of attracting somebody into our life. It's looking at what does it really mean to me as I mature and as I partner with the other person. I'm always impressed with individuals that can spend a lifetime together and at the end say, I still love you. There were days I didn't like you, but I still love you. <laughs> because what we call love is always based upon our own priorities and our own shifting beliefs, desires, wants, wise. Anyway, I hope that this has been fabulous for you. And you know what? I'm not done yet. My next podcast on the the law of attraction of, of love. We think the solution is in using the law of attraction to get the person to love us or notice us. So we try hard. So we make it a job. I want to talk about that. What do we use to attract love in our life? But the law of attraction is not about you getting that other person to notice. The law of attraction is about you, your thoughts, your feelings, and your vibration. You don't control the other person. So you might think it's a manipulation game. I would say that's probably going to be very short term. 
it's about getting in touch with yourself. What am I feeling? What are the things that are important to me? What do I like about other people? So it's getting in touch with your own feelings and your own vibrations when you're near somebody or you're in a group that you like that group or you just look across the room and you see somebody and you have these chills that run up and down your spine. I just had a young lady that um, her husband had passed and she really wasn't looking for anybody. But she said, when this gentleman, this man touched her hand, she said, I had these chills. And I didn't know what to do with them. So we may have all kinds of responses. It may be a sexual response. It may be chills in the body. It may be that the hearts connect and they make your heart sing. It may be attractions outside of the physical body. So we've talked about all that. But the next one is going to look at to think about the solution of law of attraction or to think about an approach to the law of attraction for love to get the person that you would love, the one that you are thinking about. Okay. So we'll just see how it takes us. I don't know. Maybe it sounds like a control thing, and I don't want it to be that. I want it to be something that we uncover within ourselves that we pay attention to. I just want to say that life is important to us. So thank you for being with us today. And keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today, and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe, and remember this, keep dreaming.